Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Chapter 14, Acids and Bases. So here we are in Podcast 14.1. We're going to go over the properties of acids and bases, um, give some examples of what they are, um, the three different theories, so there's three different ways to describe them. Arrhenius, which is uh, not so good. Bronsted-Lowry, which is pretty good, and it's what we actually use all the time. And Lewis, which is actually the perfect one. See the little halo? It's like a little angel. It's the perfect one. But we don't use it very much because the exceptions that it has um, don't affect us very much. And then we're going to relearn how to name acids because we've forgotten them. All right, properties of acids. And an acid, an H positive or H3O positive, these are equal to each other. They are exactly the same. So the H positive or H3O positive is what gets you in an acid. Acids taste sour. Um, they react with metals. They change blue litmus red like this. So blue litmus turns red. And red litmus um, would turn blue if you put a base on it. But I think you've done that in seventh grade or something. And the pH is less than 7. Acids in everyday life. Muriatic acid, HCl, kills mold on your patio. You can buy that there. Lemon juice, vinegar, and battery acid. We know this is a citric acid which you don't need to know the formula for it. Vinegar is acetic, which you should be able to name. And battery acid, there's different battery acids. Car battery acid is H2SO4, which is sulfuric. Properties of bases. Um, OH negative is what gets you in a base. Now, OH negatives are also dangerous. If you put a concentrated base on your skin, it causes as much or more damage than a concentrated acid. They taste bitter. Examples of bitter tastes are unsweetened chocolate, olives, and dandelions. Yep, I'm from Indiana. I eat dandelion pie. Um, reacts with organic material. It denatures protein. So it reacts with organic material and it tends to dissolve it, which is why it's used in bleaches and cleaners. Okay? And it's also slippery, which that goes along with reacts with organic material. Changes red litmus blue. See the previous slide for the picture. pH is greater than 7. Um, I know I misspelled Drano, but still whatever. Um, Drano, because it dissolves the nasty human parts that are blocking the drain. Milk of magnesia, which is something that helps you um, when, you, when your tummy hurts, that helps your tummy feel better. And bleach on the cleaners. The first guy to come up with a definition of an acid is a guy named Arrhenius. And Arrhenius acid is a substance that when added to water increases the concentration of H positive ions present. So HCl in water makes H positive plus Cl negative. It ionizes in water. Um, the thing I forgot to put down for my properties of these guys is they both conduct electricity. Because you're making ions, they both conduct electricity. Sorry about that. So here, in our radius acids, I'm making H positive and H and Cl negative. What happens here, are those are ions, which would conduct electricity. Here what happens is, the other way you can look at it is you get H3O positive plus Cl negative. And either way is fine. We're making H positive, which remember is exactly the same as H3O positive. And a radius base is a substance that when added to water increases the concentration of OH negative ions. So NaOH makes Na positive plus OH negative. Um, ammonia is the other one that does this too, and it's kind of weird. Ammonia plus water, I'm going to write it as HOH, makes NH4 positive plus OH negative. So because it made OH negative, NH3, even though it doesn't end in OH, does um, increase the hydroxide ion concentration. Bronsted-Lowry, an acid is... So Bronsted-Lowry says that an acid is an H giver and a base is an H taker. So looking at this reaction right here, HCl plus H2O, remember the acids tend to start with H as, hello, I'm an acid. So this would give an H, and it would be H3O positive plus Cl negative. And H3 um, is a base. Remember I told you that's your um, typical weak base. So it's going to accept an H from water. So in this case, HCl is an acid, and water would be the base. In this case, NH3 is a base, and water is an acid. So this would be NH4 positive plus OH negative. And in this case, this is going to be my base. It's going to accept a hydrogen from the acid. It's going to give this H. NH4 positive plus Cl negative. And 
that's the basic definition. Now, Bronsted Lowry's got um, conjugates that come into this too. So these reactions are actually usually reversible. This one isn't, but you'll learn why in a minute. We'll pretend that it is. Um, in the reverse reaction, do you see how an H here is given to Cl? So in the reverse reaction, this is acting as an acid. But because it's on the right-hand side, we call it a conjugate acid. The chloride is going to receive an H, so it's going to be a base. But because it's on the right-hand side, it's called a conjugate base. Um, NH4 in this way, this one is going to give an H, so it's a conjugate acid. And this is a conjugate base. Now I'm mad at myself. Conjugate acid. This is going to give an H. Conjugate base. Um, I'm mad at myself because I did these all in the same order. It is not always going to be acid base conjugate acid conjugate base. It doesn't happen like that. Here are the definitions of the conjugates. Conjugate acid, what the base turns into, but really it's the acid in the reverse direction. Conjugate base is what the acid turns into, but really it's the base in the reverse direction. Give acid base, conjugate acid, and conjugate base. Nitric acid is HNO3 plus sodium hydroxide. Now, in this case, this is probably a bad one. But I'm going to call it just plain old hydroxide ions. Yields uh, nitric acid and then ends in hydroxide. That's going to be your base. So I'm going to get HOH or H2O plus NO3 negative. This acid turns into this, so it's your conjugate base, turns into nitrate. And that's your conjugate base. And the other way of looking at this is this base receives an H, so it's going to turn into your conjugate acid. Ammonia, which is NH3, plus hydrofluoric acid, um, starts with NH2O, I'm an acid. Receive it, it's going to receive it, it's a base. So NH4 positive plus F negative. And then the base turns into the conjugate acid, which and the acid turns into the conjugate base. Lewis acids and bases. An acid is an electron pair acceptor. A base is an electron pair bequeather. Bequeath means to give, and it typically means to give through your will. So um, great uncle Leroy bequeathed me his stuffed possum named Morris. There you go. The best base bequeather is OH negative. OH negative's Lewis dot structure would be D, 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 D. If you are a electron pair giver, look at all the extra electron pairs. We have three pairs that we're willing to give or share. The best acid acceptor is H positive. Now, H positive has no electrons anywhere. And remember, H positive is also very small, so it's very attractive. So it's empty and attractive, which is what makes it a very good acid to accept, uh, accept electrons. The weirdo Lewis reaction, NH3. Now, you may not remember this, but NH3 has a lone pair on it. BCL3 has an empty orbital. So the way this can literally be written is H3N BCL3. So this is the, um, in this case, this has an extra electron pair, right? So the electron pair bequeather is the base, and the acceptor is the acid. Okay, so in this case, this would act as an acid. The regular Lewis reaction is seen through Lewis's eyes. Um, so here we go. We've got an H that's going to go over here. Okay, now HCl really automatically ionized, and it's got the empty thing here. So you have NH3 with this pair, and H comes and shares it. Remember, if you share a pair, that makes a bond. And because this is H positive, the whole thing becomes positive. And then Cl negative is kind of left over. Okay. So why is Lewis the best? It covers all things with base properties. Slipper, bitter, slippery, bitter, affects litmus, reacts with organics, conducts electricity. And it also covers all things acid. So it c covers them the most. So anything that's got those properties is Lewis. Most of the things 
that have acid-based properties fit Bronsted-Lowry. And many of them fit Arrhenius. All right, we're almost done here. Naming acids. This is review. We have this from before. Um, if you have an ion that ends in ide, like chloride, it becomes hydrostemic acid, like hydrochloric acid. So ide becomes hydroic acid. Ite, like sulfite, because becomes us acid, sulfurous acid. Nitrite becomes us acid, nitrous acid. Eight become X. Phosphate becomes phosphoric acid. Chlorate becomes chloric acid. Let's do a bunch of these. Hydroiodic acid. Hydroic comes from ide. That is I negative. So it's H I. And remember, acids never have a charge left over. Hydroic acid comes from fluoride, which is F negative. F negative needs one H. Phosphoric acid, ic acid, no hydro this time, comes from phosphate. Phosphate is PO4, negative 3. Now if it's negative 3, I need 3 H positives to cancel that negative 3. Perchloric acid is ic acid, comes from perchlorate, ClO4, negative 1. If it's negative 1, I need 1 H. Phosphorus acid would come from phosphite. Us comes from it. PO3, negative 3 would need 3 to go in. Cl is chloride. Ide becomes hydrochloric acid. I'm not going to write the word acid. My hand's tired. H2SO4. SO4 comes from sulfate. That means it comes from 8 turns into ic acid. Br is bromide. That would be hydro. Whoops. bromic acid. NO3 is nitrate. Nitrate becomes ic acid. Nitric acid. SO3 is sulfurous. No, it's, I'm sorry. Well, it is sulfurous acid. But it's sulfite, which becomes sulfurous acid. CRO4 is chromate, so it would become chromic acid. And since lunch is almost over, I'll let you wonder about those. And I bet one of those is on your pod quiz tomorrow. So, let's review. There are three ways to describe acids and bases. Arrhenius, hello, I'm an acid. If it starts with an H, it makes H in solution, or OH. Uh, Brown said Lowry is an H giver taker, and you need to know the conjugates. Lewis is an electron giver taker, and sometimes no H or OH at all. And that the one, you know the one example of that that I gave you. There's more than one example, but know that one example. Acids and bases have different properties. Know those properties. Add an acid to a base, and it is called a neutralization reaction because you are canceling out the properties of both. Please made out of here in under 13 and a half minutes. Have a nice long weekend and enjoy that weather, unless it's Sunday when it's terrible. Toodle.